It's not just a game. We're gonna find out. We hit on stage. Congratulations, you two. Welcome to our special interview. We are invited by Caps to take our interview. We are now joined by Caps. You can hear the fans here are crazy. Could you say hello and introduce yourself to your audience? Uh, I want to thank you guys. Uh, you've been cheering so much for us. Even when we were losing, we were one-two down in the series. I could come on stage and hear you guys cheer. So, thank you guys. Actually, did it. This was like insane theory. And why do you think you are so much stronger than SKT today? Uh, so I'm, I'm not really sure what exactly happened, but I think we just uh, <laughs> they had some really good preparation, and I mean some of it didn't work, but in the end, uh, the game five we had a very weird comp, but it ended up working. So I, I think that's it's like the, the creativity. 其实我觉得我也不太清楚我们到底是做到了什么能够比他们更强。其实他们有做很多很多的准备，可能有很多准备也没有成功的有用吧。但是可以看到我们的最后一局的时候，我们拿出了一个很奇怪的阵容，但这个奇怪的阵容最后也是成功的、有效的，可能发挥了它的作用，所以我们就赢了。那刚刚浩也是提到了最后一局他们拿到了这样的双法师的阵容，他是怎么样评价这样的一个阵容？是不是因为他们队伍当中有 perks， 所以才足够让他们拿到这样的一个阵容呢 ？You mentioned about the game five, the syndrome. And the Lissandro composition. So is that because the perks in your team that you can like let that out? Yeah. So I mean, we play in thing a lot of AD carries, but uh, we were going into game five, and perks just said, if I get a mage, then it's three win. So <laughs> we gave perks a mage. <laughs> 卡普斯呢，他其实在很多很多英雄上面都使用的非常好。可能有很多人的评论都是说，当卡普斯拿到像塞拉斯、像瑞兹、像阿卡利这样的英雄的时候，觉得好像这些英雄非常非常的OP，
just amazing. I, I have no words to describe actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we are here to take it all. You know, this is like not the end yet. This is just the first step, Wonder. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, during the series, I was a bit skeptical because, I mean, they looked like a lot better than when we played them the first time. But still, like, I knew that we had, like, we we kind of had, like, the, some secret picks. And we also, I mean, we played a bit bad, like, like a bit worse than we maybe, like, could have the first couple of games. So, I mean, I always knew that we could probably take down SKT. And then, like, the final boss was supposed to be IG in the final. But uh, now it's a bit weird, right? Because now we're playing against Team Liquid, so yeah. <laughs> it's not really like the final the I was expecting. Final but I mean, I, I like I appreciate them taking off IG for us, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say because you guys had the trouble with IG in the past. But talk to me then about that final because it is unexpected, right? It is Team Liquid that looked incredibly, incredibly strong. So how are you expecting that to go instead of playing IG? Yeah, honestly, it's just hype, you know. Like you were in a final, like whatever happens is really hype, you know, because like. There was, uh, it's kind of like a dream. Like, if you like look at it like two years ago, even like you would never say like you and any would like barely make it out of groups, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> but now it's a final at MSI, so it's a really huge step for the whole like Western scene in general. And yeah, I mean, I definitely think we're gonna win. Okay, there we go. Wonder, what do you think about the clash? Uh, yeah, I mean, since I guess we lost to them, like we went one-one in groups against them, they should not be underestimated. But I also think in a Bo5, we probably. I mean, like as I, as I see it, if we play 10 games against Team Liquid, I would like, I would probably expect us to win like eight or nine of them. So I think a BO5 would probably favor us a lot more than BO1s, where like, first of all, if anything can happen in BO1, right? And second of all, I mean, it's a, there's like less adaptation, which I think we are good at. So mm -hmm. I, I, I look forward to it at least. In terms of the mental aspect, do you think you learned or took away a lot from the fact that you guys suffered a really big loss in game one of this series, but were able to keep it going and surpass kind of the pressure of a game five? Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think after game one, it felt like our team were always a bit down just from looking at everyone's faces. And I was like, yeah, we just played so much Tarek, we just got smashed. So uh, I wasn't really sure. We just decided to like go away from it, even though like we were pretty good at it before. Mm -hmm. So we didn't want to like go like fanatic like zero two with some Atari, and then we have a chance to reverse it, but it's hard, you know. Yeah. So we just went to our own style, which we are, we know we are good at. And I mean, when we were one to down, it was like I just had like flashbacks from the RNG series, so I I felt kind of in the comfort zone. I'm not gonna lie, I said my team, I told my team we are in comfort zone. I told them we're gonna win this game and I'm gonna pick Mage next game and we're gonna win and it all happened. Like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna like beat that guy, but I'm that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and also, it's pretty fun. You actually beat Faker in SKT with a mid laner, right? That, yeah. That got, does that count for something? Yeah, my Cinder is two against Faker, 100% minute. There we go. Uh, wonder. Final question about the games. Of course, the Pike is something we saw you pick last time versus SKT. How much of it was mental advantage that you thought it would trigger in them, and how much was it this works in this comp? Well, I mean. Uh, well, it was mostly Luca who said we wanted to play AP, AP bot because he didn't really play it this tournament or like he didn't play it a lot of this. And then we wanted, we need like AD on other lanes, of course, right? And then, I mean, I guess Pike was just one of the picks that we could go for. Mm -hmm. And also with the bands they had, I felt like I kind of knew that I was going to play Pike into Kinnon even before I picked it. That's also what I said to my team that if I banned like the two jumps I did in, in the, after I picked Pike, I would most likely be playing against Kinnon, right? And that's like a fine matchup for me. and. It seemed to be pretty fine as well, even though he didn't really. I mean, we were trading sides, and he didn't really like push his advantage in early game. But mm -hmm. it seemed pretty good, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think I think it was pretty good. Uh, so, final questions here. You talked about it already. This is really a monumental occasion when it comes to League of Legends history. NA versus EU in an MSI final, really a sign of the times changing. I'm going to give you the open floor to say whatever you want to Team Liquid that you're facing in the final tomorrow. Wonder? Uh, well, I mean, I guess good luck to them, right? Uh, I think they are playing way better than they did the first couple of days they played MSI. So I'm still looking forward to it, even though it was not really the final I expected. But I mean, NA versus EU and Rift Rivals coming up soon. I mean, this is going to be, I guess, really good competition for us the next couple of games. Yeah. OK, nice and respectful. Perks? Uh, I definitely respect you. I think mm -hmm. they are a good team. but. I just don't really see how they, like, what do they have over us in the best of five where we are very flexible and they don't really know what we're going to show up with. And yeah, I just want to win against Doublelift. Uh, I saw some of the TL tweeted uh, that they have the best or second best ball in the tournament. So I'm going to make it the second best. <laughs> there we go. I love it. Congratulations. Thank you so much for the interview. A fantastic best of five. G2 makes it to the MSI final versus Team Liquid. How about them apples? Back to you. The world is watching.